All right, so the 5060 is out in a low profile version. And I wanted to see if using the 5060 over the 4060 in my external GPU enclosure, uh, the Bantam uh, available, check the link in the description if you wanna pick one of these up. But this works over Oculink or USB 4 and uh, the link below will show you how to build your own using parts you can source uh, by following that link. Um, so anyways, uh, this is that external GPU and it had a 4060 in it and now going to put the 5060 in it. But uh, first we'll do some benchmarks because my thought was, yeah, sure, the 5060 should be faster, but at what cost in terms of power budget, uh, how well does it perform? So that's the question, you know, is it a worthy upgrade if you need this small form factor? Um, or if you tune it for efficiency, is it going to be much of the same as the 4060? So let's try to answer that question. In order to do that, I'm going to be using, of course, this, uh, but also this JMK Tech and UC Box K8 Plus. And this particular box has both USB 4 and Oculink, however, uh, this Bantam has been configured for Oculink, so we'll be using it over that faster Oculink port to do all of our benchmarking. All right, so here we have the Gigabyte 5060 LP. You can see it has the option to use the small height and therefore will work in my external GPU enclosure. Uh, this is available to purchase um, my website. See the link in the description below. But let's go ahead and compare it to the 4060 and see if there's any physical difference. So in order to do that, we're gonna take this guy apart. We'll remove the power connector. Okay, you can see they look very similar, which is great. It makes compatibility a lot uh, easier, but they are not identical by any means. In fact, if you look on the back of these, the PCB has a slightly different layout. The fan shroud also has a slightly different layout. There also appears to be more heat sinks in the 5060 versus the 4060, at least a little bit beefier, you can see. Um, but anyways, uh, let's get this back in uh, the Bantam eGPU enclosure and see how it fares. So the first thing I'm going to do is just compare the 5060 to the 4060 and the entire time I'm doing that, I will have a power meter on the screen so you can see how much power it's consuming while it is getting the frames that it's getting. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at all of those results. Okay, so the first thing you'll wanna notice is that idle just sitting at the desktop, the 5060 was more efficient. It used about 15 watts and the 4060 was using 18. Uh, once they're fully loaded here, the 5060 at stock settings used about 162 watts where the 4060 was using 133 watts. Now, uh, this power consumption is directly to the eGPU enclosure only. This does not include the CPU, the monitor, any of those things, because with the external GPU, you can isolate the power right there. Um, so finally, we get our scores. The 5060 does 12,849 times by where the 4060 does 10,682. However, we are only looking at the graphics store score uh, as that is what we're testing for. So 10,458 points divided by 133 watt average gives us 80.31 points per watt on the 4060 at stock. And the 5060 gives us 
13,487 on the GPU score, divide that by with a 162 watt average it was using, and we got 83.25 points per watt. So the 5060 actually is quite a bit more efficient, although it is using uh, roughly 30 watts more power. Okay, here we're looking at Cyberpunk, and by the end of it, you'll see that we'll get a 45.05 frame per second average on the 4060. And the 5060 gets a 57.43 frames per second average. So the 5060 is outperforming uh, quite decently that 4060. However, it is using about 160 watts on average. And the 4060 is using 135 watts on average. So that does put the 5060 into the more efficient category. It's also definitely worth pointing out that uh, in the Cyberpunk 1440p test, this is a 27% uplift in performance for that 5060. Okay, we're looking at bright memory, which is an RTX uh, benchmark, uses uh, ray tracing and DLSS, uh, showing it at 2x speed. The 5060 ends up scoring 93 frames per second average while using 163 watts. 4060, 71 frames per second average while using 135 watts. The 5060 ends up being 30. 0.9% faster and 8% more efficient uh, compared stock for stock. So this is also a pretty surprising result in this 1440p ray tracing benchmark. Okay, let's do a little change of pace. See some uh, large language model. This is Llama, 8 billion uh, parameters. And token generation on the 5060 was about 50% faster. And this is really surprising. Um, it didn't seem to be using any more power necessarily, but the generation wasn't happening long enough to really dis make any definitive claims about efficiency. Okay, so I wanted to now like make these things more efficient, right? And let them show their best faces forward. And so with the 4060, I gave it a plus 100 clock speed in MSI Afterburner, um, and I was shooting to kind of dial it in to use about 100 watts, and you can see I'm, I'm tuning it in Furmark to make it when Furmark is running it used 100 watts. Um, my goal was to level them out at the same watt level between the 4060 and 5060. As it turned out, the 5060 can't be tuned all the way down to 100. Uh, its power limit, uh, will not go that low using just the power limit feature. You'd have to get more creative with your curves to limit it. So I, what I ended up doing is just making both of these chips more efficient by adding 100 clock on the undervolt curve and uh, limiting the 4060 to 88% and the 5060 to 85%, which is as low as I could go. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, now with our two devices tuned for efficiency, we can kind of compare them. The 4060 optimized now got 10,100 points, but it only used 113 watts on average to do so, uh, giving it 89.38 points per watt. Versus the 4060 at stock, this made it 11% more efficient. The 5060, however, uh, bring it the watts down to 137, which basically matched the 4060 from before, made it very efficient, 97.08 points per watt versus the 5060 stock, it's 16% more efficient. Also, using about the same power as a 4060, it's 27% faster. So this was a surprising result for me. You can basically tune this 5060 down to 4060 stock speeds and uh, get still a pretty massive jump in performance. Now overall, the 4060 was kind of nice because you could just hang out and use around 100 watts for a lot of things and still get decent performance. The 5060 is hard to tune down there. You can do it, but you'd have to use you know, some more advanced uh, tuning curves, which is certainly within the realm of possibility for those of us who like to tinker. But the 5060 is proving to be pretty optimized. And I'm surprised that so many people were so upset with the 5060 at launch. I mean, obviously, we always want more. We expect more. Uh, but in terms of efficiency, 
Uh, it's doing pretty well. Okay, back to Cyberpunk. And these results were also very interesting. The 4060 with optimized settings uh, used about 115 frames on average and only got 41.78 frames per second. It's actually a little slower as to be expected generally, uh, but it was 8% more efficient, getting 0 0.3633 frames per second per watt. The 5060 in this optimized setting used uh, 137 watts on average and had a great efficiency score there, highest we've seen obviously, 0 0.4177 frames per watt versus the 5060 in its stock power configuration. This was 16% more efficient. And again, this was 27% faster than the stock 4060 using the same amount of power from the wall. So this is actually a pretty incredible result. I don't know why they would have tuned the 4060 to have, be using so much more power um, by default because it can run quicker than that 4060 without needing the upgraded power envelope. So for your eGPU needs, should you stay with the 4060 or should you pop over to the 5060? Um, well, based on my testing today, uh, if you're going to be using an external GPU like this, uh, I would definitely recommend bumping up to the 5060. Not to mention pricing right now, the 5060 is almost $100 cheaper than the 4060 of these gigabyte uh, LP cards. So I don't know exactly why that is, but um, if you're on the fence thinking, eh, the 5060, not worth it, I would highly recommend checking it out. Um, if you want to pick up and, and build your own eGPU, I have a website that lets you uh, see how to uh, build your own. So check that out, link in the description. And thanks for watching this video. I'd love to hear your comments and thoughts on the 5060 uh, as applied to eGPU.